Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, in this video, we are finally going to be starting the Beast Tribes for Shadowbringers. So, we are going to be unlocking, well, first off, Shadowbringers Beast Tribes are more, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? More, uh, not condensed, but, uh, pretty much split, I should say. So each jo uh, job type has its own beast tribe now. So before it used to be, like in Heaven's Ward, um, there used to be only two types of beast tribes. Ones for Disciples of War and Disciples of Hand. So Galarus did not have a beast tribe in Heaven's Ward. In Stormblood, we had a Disciples of War one and one for Disciples of both Land and Hand, which were the Namazu. And, th and now in Shadowbringers, each job type has its own beast quest. So Disciples of War have their own, uh, Gatherers have their own, and Crafters have their own. So it's more stream- well, it's more uh, broken up, I should say. So we're going to be doing the- unlocking the, the uh, Gatherer Beast Tribes. I think this is the, these guys were the- um, I can't remember what these guys were. Oh, hello there. You're the sweet young lady staying with Master Matoya, are you not? I mean, uh, I would mean, uh, thank you for looking after my boy that one, one time. His name is Valen. You remember him, don't you? He's always running around with his friend Quinfort. You know, the one who much enjoys hearing the voice, sound of his own voice. Why, mo just moments ago, he rushed in here and went dashing off, shouting about how he'd made a discovery of a staggering import over in Fennel. Valen, bless his heart, went running after him. I know these parts aren't as dangerous as they once were, and Quinford apparently has some friends among the, vi the Vies, but still, I can't help but worry. Would you be so kind as to follow them after them? I'm just to make sure Valen doesn't get into trouble over anything over his head. You can tell him his mother sent you. Now... Obviously, um, you gotta do a, you gotta do a ton of prerequisite quests in order to get these unlocked. Um, and when I was going through the Shadowbringers quest story uh, storyline, I went ahead and cleared all the side quests, save for that, save for the this unlock. It's been a long time coming, but I can finally get this stupid. Okay, finally. Unlock the the these beast tribes now. <laughs> I can't remember what the what this beast tribe is. I can't remember the name. What's going on here? For the last time, Quinfort, would it kill you to actually explain yourself before going? You go dashing off, dashing around the forest like a madman. What nonsense do you speak, Valen? The keeper of whispers could never would never be so insolent as to keep the gods waiting when they would share with me their their wisdom. Why, the mere notion is preposterous, blasphemous, even. <laughs> What's going on, Cecilia? What are you? What are you doing here? Make sure you guys don't get into trouble. You, my mother sent you. Dear heavens, I'm sorry for dragging you into this. As you must uh, suspect, Quinford's rat ranting and raving about the will of the wood again. When he ran off shouting about prophecies, I simply had to follow along to make sure he didn't get himself into trouble. The vice said we were welcome at any time, of course, but would it kill it? The man would be more uh, circumspect. Oh, that reminds me. Whatever happened to that squirmy little fellow of that Quinford? For whatever ungodly reason, believes to be this great serpent of Ronka. Does it still travel with you, or did it get squished along, somewhere along the way? What ignorance is this, Valen? That divine protector has returned to slumber in its nest deep in the heart of Raktika, but from it, which speaks to me in my dreams even now. Ronka, that's what it is. It's, uh, okay, it's scree! There it is. 
I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't remember this at all. Mainly because I didn't really read any of the prerequisite quest lines. Oh great one, if it's truly you, return to your grace to grace your little servant with your presence in this time of need. Truly the the wood has an answer, my pleas. If the great serpent has been been with you all this time, says so I can only imagine what sort of dreams he's been having. And yet, as skeptical as I am, the vies seem to put stock in his visions. If there's even a hint of truth in them, who knows what they're in for? <laughs> I know, my friend, good friend, for I've seen it a thousand, a thousand, a thousand times in my visions. This venerable force is on the verge of entering a new age of harmony. For the great serpent shall let out a mighty cry, and so doing summon forth they who did serve great Ronka in times of eld. Verily, the rival the heirs to wisdom ancient and true is nigh at hand. Now it is time we must follow where the great serpent leads, and doing so they claim to a great future. Quintfort? Not again. Sorry to impose Cessa, would, would you mind helping me go after him? There's only one path forward through the forest, so we wish you shouldn't be too hard to find. Oh my god. What am I dealing with here? Any luck finding him? Look, over there in that flower bed, someone's there. Uh oh, what's going on here? A rat who speaks? Who are you and why do you trespass in our sacred forest? Answer me or we'll be dying on rats through this night. You guys do to have mercy, but I was sure you are. You guys most assured they'll be coming in peace. Put down your arms. If my vision speaks true and I have never known them to speak otherwise, this mousy vet. Mousy fellow and his diminutive companion are none other than the descendants of a proud ronkin tribe of old. You. You were from Slytherin, yes? One of the so called Knights Blessed? There you are. I swear, Quinfor, do you take pleasure in driving me mad? Give me, forgive me, my friend here. He simply cannot control himself sometimes. I promise you he'll give a certain talking to when we get home. Now, Quinfort. Hmm? Friends of the Ally Ronka, are you? You are quite bold, or quite foolish, rushed forward before the spear point of a vise as you did. And who, or what, is this one? I've not seen him nor any of his ilk before. And yet, you say he's a descendant of a proud Ronka, tri tribe of Ronka? Most well, assuredly so, for I did foresee this vi coming in, my vi in a vision granted to me by none other than the Great Serpent himself. Huh. Stylish serpent. Huh. Look, Father, there's two of them. Kikurin. Here? And I can't be surprised. I mean, we've seen all kinds of familiar looking beast tribes, so. Let's just. Another serpent? What is this? The straight, the straight serpent travels with you as well? Curious. How very curious indeed. Most suspicious encounter this is, for a friend of the Great Serpent is a friend of ours. Yes, pray, my good sir, do and let me as to how the name of your most ancient and ven venerable tribe. <clears throat> we are the Qatar Qatari. We call us an ancient and venerable tribe, and I cannot deny that we are that very much that. The Qatari? That is the name I have heard from my elders. And yet, I was told that the last Qatari vanished a hundred years ago. Those of us born about the flood never paid the stories with much heed, but you said that we truly stand before Katara in the flesh? 
However it may be, it is clear that the ally of Ronka and her friends mean us no harm. Let's put down our arms. Lord, what am I dealing with here? Father and I have come in search for a great artifact of our past. Artifact? Great stones buried deep in the cave by, by this father's father's father's. How many fathers will there again, father? Okay. Chuck girl, have you forgotten your manners? They would be on a tour not to introduce ourselves to our honored new friends. I am a Katara not Noddle of the Katari, and this is my foolish child, Charcoal. Chakral Kodal. Oh god, what a name. Do forgive us for our improper 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 propriety. Yes, do forgive us for our impropriety. This guy this child has trouble speaking tough words like I do. For now I understand your tribe has made its home in the shadows of the light, deep in the forest on the far side of the Katana Ravel, or Ravel, by the rushing waters of Raktika Falls. We did not always hide in the darkness. This place we now stand was once our home. Then came that fateful day when the skies were flooded with light. Facing certain dim where forebears fled the forest, but not before a band of the bravest gave their lives to stow away our greatest treasures. For safekeeping, with the hope of one day that our children's children might unearth them anew. These are the artifacts which of which my son spoke. The Katari st Stele, st uh, mighty stone monoliths engraved with, with the accumulated knowledge of our people in its entirety. Of course, it is precisely as I saw it in a vision of, of the great serpent bestowed upon me. A proud and ancient tribe of scribes and scholars, stewards of knowledge of ancient Ronka. Oh, you are most insightful, my friend. Indeed, we were once known as the stewards of note, a title that fittingly describes both our duties as keepers of, knowledge, of knowledge, written knowledge and the surpassing aptitude for, of which we per, peru, pursued the task. Our ancestors served sir, sir, proudly as scribes and and uh, scri scribeneers. Scribners for many a generation of Ronkin emperors. It is a role that came quite natural to our people. For you see, we are not blessed with the, with the longer lifespans of your kind. Thus, from our earliest days, we have been most met meticulous about recording the happenings and learnings of our lives in precise and painstaking detail. The Katari stelae, or more specifically, the carvings and etchings that grace their surfaces, represent the sum summation of all the knowledge and wisdom we have acquired over the years. They represent, one might say, the collective memory of our people, passed down through the ages from generation to generation. Long have we dreamed of returning here to search for the stones and reclaiming our legacy, and yet, nasty, nasty sin eaters and worse stood in our path, making the journey far too perilous to even attempt. Then one day the skies turned dark. I trembled in terror, but the next thing I knew, the great symbol was hopping and squirming beside me. He told me that the path through the Ravel had been cleared, and we were free to go home at last. Precisely, and so is that my boy and I received the blessings of our fellow Katari and became the first of our kind and generations to return to this part of the Great Wood. Unfortunately, we were immediately set upon by all sorts of nasty creatures, forcing us to retreat and ponder our course of action. Where we came upon you and threatened you at spear point. Pray forgive us, allies of Ronka. We knew not who, who you are were, nor all you had suffered to arrive here. You intend to remain here in the Great Winter to search for these stelae of yours, was it? Worry not. We shall tell all in Fano fa of you that you are friends and not to be harmed. And with that, we must be on our way. Go in peace. Alright. We cleared that up. Dear me, that, but that was a close one, wasn't it? It was all but certain Ch Chikuro and I were going to end up skewered. Were it up to me, I would have left the boy behind for his safety. But he is ever a curious one when, and would hear nothing of it. I'm not a child anymore, father. I am all, I am all, all of three summers. Three? Why, when I was three, I could barely walk straight. 
<laughs> I do not doubt that this that is so good. That is so good, sir. But for our people, the oldest of whom would be lucky to see 20 summers. Shakuro here is almost a, a Katari grown. But enough about us. If I might change the subject, you know your way around the Greatwood, yes? I have reason to believe that our forefathers buried this delay in a cavern that extends deep into the mountains near the Ox Don Gap. Perhaps you might be willing to. Oh. Come, Father, we must follow him. But of course, it all makes sense now. This is the great serpent who guided you here to us, and now, together, we must heed its clarion call. Say no more, as great stewards of Ronka. We are honored to assist you in your noble cause. That is most kind of you, good sir. In that case, pray allow me to oblige. Let us follow where the great one leads. What do you have to say about this violin? Nothing? Just going with the flow? Okay, I'll go with the flow too. This empty looking place. Father, could this be the place? Let's see now. The mark on the cave's entrance appears to be an ancient Ronkin ward. This is promising and yet problematic. Do allow me to explain. We could tell you worship Docs Dallin, God of the Dead, and the word be world below. Our forebearers no doubt believe that if they sealed away the stalet deep within the bowels of the land, Dallin himself would reach watch over them to keep them safe until the day their descendants had returned. Well, it's fascinating. Your knowledge of rock and tradition is impressive indeed. How or do you manage to know so much despite your chronicles of history being lost to you for so long? Many ruins can be found near Octica Falls within the wood we have called home since the flood. We have made an effort to explore and excavate them as best we could, that our rock and roots would be not entirely forgotten. Most, most admirable goal, and one near and dear to my own heart as well. For you see, I am one of the knights blessed who traveled to these parts after the flood. I too have a deep personal interest in the beliefs or traditions of the ancient civilization that once flourished here. In fact, I have done extensive research looking to my own ancestors, and was pleased to discover that I can trace my lineage back to none other than the great sage Dwa Waddle himself. Princessa here is a true is, is a true ally of Ronka. Why, as the Vise tell it, her coming was foretold by the last emperor himself. The descendants of Ronka and their allies united over across the years. Oh, joyous day! This must mean must be truly be a gift from the Great Serpent. I can vouch for Cecil here. She is the very woman who drove the light water from these lands. As uh, so the descendant of the Great Sage, what's her the Great Sage? What's his name? I suggest you to at least. You let at least half of his realm is going one ear and out the other. Could it truly be? But yes, our hero stands before us. So we watched your battle in the Ravel from the shadows. The moment you struck down that beast of light, we knew the new age is nigh. Oh, never have I been seen such gallantry and valor. I saw the battle too. Never have I seen such valentry and galler. So what do we do about this? At any rate, my good sirs and madam, I'm keen to begin the excavation. I bet fear it won't be as simple. The warden still sits here bars her entrance, and we have still have to find a way to break it if we hope to proceed. If what we have gleaned from our research is correct, we will require, this will require an object of immense arcane power. A relic that will see, speak to the seal and convey that the Katari have returned to the claim was ours. An object imbued with the mystical energies of the forest itself. Yes, an object with the glow of the great wood, as you always say, Father. I shall find it for you. Your enthusiasm is admirable, Charcurl, Chakurl, but let us not get ahead of ourselves. This is a perilous place, and I have no intention of seeing you get snatched up by some terrible beast. And so I turn to the hero of the Ravel and the son of, D and son of Waddle. My good sirs and madam might used to know some, someone who could aid us in our search. I trust me, I'm a miner.
a lucky day. Clearly, you're not not merely a hero on the battlefield, but a woman of many talents indeed. We would never be so indebted to you if we could impose upon you one just just this la just this once. Yes, we would be most indebted, my good sir. Or was it, madam? Father can never tell which is which. <laughs> not prowling, Chikuro. We must find a way to open this portal at once, that we might summon our fellow stewards here and begin searching for the so this lie in earnest. Oh, ally Ronka, Katara Noddle of the Katara bows, ba bows down and beseeches you. Will you lend us your aid and help my people reclaim our long lost legacy? I promise you the de the debt will go not go unpaid. I realize I asked much of you, but soon, at, but so soon as we met, needless to say, I pray take as much time as you require to consider our offer. Should you be inclined to offer your strength and wisdom to us, just say the word. That's what I came here for. Alright. I'm with you. Powerfully spoken, Sessa. Truly, this shall mark a new dawn of the, in, the, in the annals of Ronkin history. As the great sages might witness, I say, let the Katai rise to glory anew. We are truly in your debt, my ally Ronka. I entrust the vital task of finding an object with the glow of the great wood to you. That's where you begin your search. Leave that to me, my lo long snouted friend. Did you mayhap notice that the serpent your your dear Chakura brought along has a rather distinctive pattern on its scale on its most exquisite body? I have reason to believe that this pattern shall indeed lead us to where we, which we seek. Hark unto the serpent's cry and know that the points of light are glow of mist. The stripes represent those precise spots where the ether that flows through the Great Wood is most densely, des densely concentrated. Behold, and here in the northwestern reaches of the blind forest of Ixmaja, conveniently marked by the slimy little ska the, the scar, we can see what is doubtless a con convergence of sorts. If anywhere it is there, we shall find a specimen of sufficient power to breach the seal. <laughs> if the sun dwaddles says so, and then surely would behoove us to pay heed. May we return with the relic, pray, let Chakurl not see at once. I would have my boy gain first hand knowledge of the wisdom of his forefathers. Alright. We gotta go over here. Shimmering quartz. That was easy. So it's nice that they, uh, we actually have a crap or a job, or not, a uh, beast tribe for each job type now. So I always find it weird that we first had. Two disciples of land beast tribes and one crafter. Two two more disciples of beast disciple of wars beast tribes, and then one for crafter and gatherer. So I always thought it was weird. So it's nice that we finally have one for all three of them. Why wow, it's beautiful and thank thank you sir madam or was it madam sir now the boss says I need it and simply put it on the door and Drum roll please It's a hole. My word, it opens! A splendid, splendid ferocious. Splendid fero, fero, splendid feroce? I don't know what I said the first time. Spl 
Splend Splend Fid uh, Okay, whatever. Look, Father, the seal's broken. It has, Chakurl. It has. And with this, after a long after a hundred years, we stand at the verge of reclaiming our legacy. But our task has only begun. There will be digging, yes, much digging, and delving. We must relay the triumphant tidings to our tribesmen and summon them here to assist them in the excavation. Yes, and this day the stewards will not rest until a new page in the annals of Qatari, of Qatari history has been writ. Do not worry, Father. I'll work as hard as any steward to reclaim our less le lessagi legacy. You're trying, guy. It's all that matters. Oh, Sir Madam Cecil, you'll help us on our quest, yes? I came this far already, so why not? Look at that! Sealed tight for a century, the door to the ancient cave now lies open, and Qatari excavation effort can begin in earnest. Good, Cecilia. We must, we must meet my mother. Father will. Our mother will be running the camp and seeing that everything is in order. Isn't that right, mother? Yes. My son speaks true. Reclaiming our history is about more than a grand discoveries and of ancient artifacts. There is much that must be done to ensure we can go about our daily lives in this place. So to call upon you for aid from time to time, if, if you would be so inclined to help us. Will the steward's excavation effort to succeed? Will the lost delight of the, of the Qatari return to the light that young Chakuro might one day know the wisdom of his ancestors? Or the ancient secrets destined to stay forever shrouded in darkness? Only the gods know. Huh. Very, a very cartoony uh, outro. All right, nice. All right. So, uh, that's it for that little intro quest. When I can go to the next rank, I will be back. Now, these will be like the uh, Stormblood or the Stormblood tribe. They all start at level three. So, like with the like with the uh, Stormblood Beast Tribes, I can get them all and do them all in order and keep them relatively close in reputation. But yeah, and then I can proceed to the next rank. We will rank. We will be, be, be back. All right, we're ready to proceed to the next rank. So, Shock, what's going on, lad? Good sir, it was it was sir, wasn't it? Mother tell me you've been working your tail off around the stopple. Is this what? Is that why I can't see your tail? Perhaps. Anyhow, thanks to you, my father says we're ready to begin the excavate ex ex vacation. Isn't this so exciting? Shock. You must remember to remain calm and composed. These caves are vast. The tunnels are burrowing deep into the bowels of the land. Slow, steady, and circumspect is the order of the day. As we speak, our preliminary exploration team is serving the tunnels to determine where we might best begin the excavation. We will await their findings before deciding the best way to move forward. Understood, Father. I promise to be Sir Sumspect. Does, uh, does that mean we can begin digging already? Tawar Monol! What news is this from the depths? Dig Master Katarl! I fear we encounter something rather unexpected. I fear that we may not be able to commence the excavation effort as quickly as we had hoped. We can't start digging? But why? What did you find down there? No sooner we stepped through this entrance, our whiskers twitching in anticipation of the wonders that awaited, that we did see them. Nasty creatures swarming in every nook and cranny of the caves. Well, it's troublesome, troublesome troubling development indeed. 
We could tire our scribes, not warriors, and indeed it was, it was the presence of some fearsome fiends, and worse, blocking our way through the Ravel that kept us trapped for a hundred years. Are we doomed to suffer a similar fate here? I can do more than just gather things. I did defeat the Light Ward, you know. The yeah, like Ronka and the Bringer of the Night would have felled these terrible beasts for us. I would like to burn more. I like a little more than to take advantage of your kindness, but I fear there is a rub. A rub? A rub. In our preliminary explorations of the Stopple, we have discovered that another reward seals off the tunnels below. A reward not unlike the one that barred the entrance, but one with one notable and unfortunate difference. It's a reward impassable to all but the servants of Dalin, namely the Katari. Now I fear we have to find our own way to dispatch the fiends that we have burrowed their way up into the depths. But without Sir Madam Cecil's A, we'll be treated up in the moment we step in, step in there. Tails, whiskers, and all. Okay. This great serpent speaks! Indeed. Yet yeah, it does not move. Till now we have had only that to follow where it goes. This time it appears we must fully grasp the import of its message. A message which sadly is beyond my comprehension. If only there were someone who... Oh, but of course, the son of, Dwa of, of Waddle. Of Dwaddle. The son of... You mean the tall fellow who likes to have wave his arms in the air when he talks? <laughs> the very same. <clears throat> Sassel, so it appears we will require assistance once more. Might you be so kind as to see my boy safe to Slitherbow? That you might summon this Quint for for us. Okay. Would you kindly sass off? I and I would appreciate it ever so much and more. Now come along, great serpent. All right. Alright, I think you're in here, aren't you? Or is it the other room? No, that's it's the other room. What's this you say? Felby is part of the hot tunnels at every turn. No doubt there are rooms the shadows that one of the forest come to life. Demons come back to suck, suck the dry currents of ether that give the great wood life, reducing their home to a withered husk. They could be that. Or they can simply be the nasty little brutes that crawl their way up in the, between the rocks, you know. You know, like the ones from around here. Valen, my good sir, madam. You know these creatures too? I do. Mother tells me that, they, that when an a our ancestors came to Slitherbell, they were set upon by a storm of ravenous creatures that crawled up from below. Fortunately, one of, their, one of, the, of our elder priests managed to utter an incantation that drove them away. If you look closely at the walls around us, you see glyphs around them, carved in them. The same protective magic that saved our forefathers ha then has been worked into the walls, very walls around us. In a sense, the settlement of Slither Boat itself serves as a ward against the dangers that lurk beneath us. Just so, Valon, and it's precisely and it's precisely wards and incantations of the sort that I have made the focus of my studies of late. I remain ever impressed with your knowledge, my good sir, madams. Might it be too much to ask if you could teach these incantations of the Great Serpent that you might protect us in our expedition below? Hmm? What? what blasphemy do you speak, child? Do you think me, a humble servant of the woods, so brazen as to believe he can enlighten the divine protector itself? Look, this isn't exactly my area of expertise, but it strikes me that there might be a simpler way to approach this. Why don't we simply fashion a talisman or two for them? You know, like the ones we've always used to keep danger at bay? I can grab the simple object to serve as a vessel, then Quinfork can mutter a few words and chant it as he sees fit. Tradition dictates that the talisman be fashioned from materials in indelibly connected to the bearer's home. Those of, the, those of us who live in Slitherbell usually gather what we need from the, the Satya swamps, but our Katari friends will have to look for the, to the east. Sessla, your knowledge of rocks and stones might serve us well here. Why don't you head over to Majurl's Regret and see if you can't find us the Serpent's Eye. It's a rare gem that we often carry around about to carry ward off danger. I shall immediately begin weaving an incantation, especially tailored to protect our good friends from the sort of terrifying creatures that manifest the caves and tunnels they seek to explore. <laughs> a foolproof plan, if ever there was one. 
Shock, you can stay here with me in Slitherbone and help me collect other materials I need. It'll be the perfect opportunity to introduce you to my fellow blessed. Once we have everything we need, let's meet up in Hopple's Stopple. I want to test the effectiveness of the talisman for myself before we leave Shock and, her, and his friends on their own. Shock. Okay. Uh, gonna go down there. It's crazy how vast this jungle is. I mean, this this jungle is freaking huge. A serpent's eye. That was easy. <laughs> Oops, that's what I want to do. Is your serpent's eye? Why, yes, this should serve us quite well. Just give me a moment or two. I'll run up the materials, shock, and I gather from the village and whip up something in no time. Chalk. Cut chalk. Instead of shock. And add a feather here, here, and here, then spread and thread it through the lengths of the rope, and yes, this should do it. Looks like a dream catcher. It's it's beautiful, and this will allow us to begin the ex ex vacation safety. You see, you say, not so fast. The town still needs to be enchanted before it, it's of any use. As it is now, it's a little more than a fancy little ornament. Well, Quinfort, this is the moment you've been waiting for, isn't it? <laughs> say no more. Stand back and bear witness as Quinfort, descendant of Dwaddle, weaves an incantation the likes of your eyes have never seen. Why do I have a bad, bad feeling about this? Or not my Va dear, dear Valen. I fret in truth, at first I was uncertain whether, whether which of the many prayers I've memorized would serve us best. A traditional chant of the bled's blessed? But wait. The guitar are an ancient race, so perhaps this calls for an incantation from ancient Ranka? Long did I ponder. Chose choose poorly, after all, and it could mean death and destruction to our far friend of our friends, if not the force itself. Fortunately, it was then that the Great Serpent came to me in a vision and liked me as to the precise words that would deliver us to salvation. Words which have long been writ in the Gospel of Quintfort. Are going to chant the talisman with the ramblings from your, dream, from your dream diary? I really have a bad thing about this. What can go wrong? I'll kill the drum roll too. Do not be silly, Valen. Valen, the great serpent speaks to me, and I am but a vessel of his divine wisdom. Hark, just precisely as it says in chapter 52, verse 5. The goddess claws stained cerulean. She did well wait the arrival of the stewards. The coming of the darkness marked a new dawn. A proud people returned to the wood, where the egg once fell from the high above. Oh, great serpent of Ronka, gifted to us by the heavens. Hear the plea of the great sage, sage Sion and guide the children of Ronka safely to their ancestral home. Is that it? That's it? I was very... I was expecting, like, flair. But, uh, that was nothing. Oh, great serpent. Do it, tell me more prayers heard. Well, I've never heard an incantation so inspiring. Your powers are truly so, or something else, Master Quinford. Looks like nothing happened to me. Now, Holly, you're wise beyond your years, my good, my young Katari friend. 
My knowledge is vast, but my powers of indeed Progius is more more than an honor will them in the service of my of your esteemed people. Though he's prone to bouts of madness from time to time, Quinford is an accomplished priest. The talisman should serve you well. Splendid! Our excavation effort has been already delayed for the far longer than we can afford. Well, well, Chalk, this is your moment of truth. There's no telling what dangers lurk beneath us. Are you quite certain you wish to accompany me in the tunnels below? But of course, Father, why else would I have come this far with you? Together we will unearth the secrets of our far, for, far, for their forthers and reclaim our history. Very well, it's clear you did not take the task lightly. Well, perhaps you are coming of age after all. And with that, I believe it's time we started digging. Let the ex-vacation begin! Some time later. Hey. Katari, Nadal, and Chalk. Katari and Chalk have safe return from their preliminary investigation of the tunnels. That's what they find out. Was this another incarnation of the great servant made manifest before us? Could, what could, whatever could the meaning of this? Be? I must know at once. So many serpents. <clears throat> if you could settle down for just a moment, Master Quinn, for I will explain in detail I witnessed down below. Finally, well, I found a stone. It was big and square and covered with all sorts of writing, just like in the legends. As my boy says, we did indeed find the st the stele. Or at least one piece of them. What well, remains? According to Qatar legend, the stele comprised four perfectly square stones stacked to form a massive pillar, which is to say, we have found what we have found is but one part of a larger whole. And if that were not unfortunate enough, even the single stele stella we found was a bad has been badly weathered through the years. In many places, the engravings are but indecipherable. This is not all we found. Lying beside the shattered stone were several sad piles of bones. No doubt the remains of our once proud forefathers who carried the stele down below. I started to think of the last moments torn apart by seniors as they hid away our legacy for safekeeping. Clara and I thought to carry the stone to the surface, but in that moment something jumped out and stood in our path. Another serpent. Our mind eyes to be believed. The, beha the beheaded serpent first accompanied our Katari friends remains on the surface, which means we are graced by yet another, incarnar incarnar another, another incarnation of the Divine Protector. A third manifestation of the Great Serpent. Just how many of them are there, anyway? At the very least, this is the only one we encountered on our expedition, and yet, it, if it traveled here from somewhere to guide us in our efforts, it would not be unreasonable to assume that there are others where, there, where this one came from. In truth, it appeared that this that it appeared and spoke to us just as we stood before the shattered stone. How can I help but believe, but believe it was conveying us a message, just as, a, as a, just as its brethren had guided us to these ancient tunnels? Chalk and I pondered the matter, and we believed that we understand. The great serpent bids, bids us to unearth what remains of the scattered and weathered stele, and piece together our people's history anew with our own hands and minds. I see. The stones truly have been scattered and weathered by time, and that's the best you can hope to do. Yet surely you must have you must have been able to make out something from that remain of the stone. What chronicles of eld were writ there? Mm. What we were able to make out of the markings being inscribed with us. A mighty Ronsa wearing a crown, no doubt meant to represent the first king Emperor Ronka, stood tall with the blade raised high over his head. Before him cowered a Katari, one of our forefathers, no doubt. The carbon would, ha would, ha would see them depict the momentous occasion that was the first encounter between our people and the Empire. And the implications could not be more clear. Doubtless our ancestors, ill suited for battle, were conquered and subjected by the might of Ronka, under, the, under whose yoke they would find new purpose as stewards, as stewards of history. The most fascinating interpretation, Father, but I'm, if I might be so bold, I saw John's quite differently. I do not believe the Ronkan Empire em Emperor would be so cruel as to threaten the poor weak Atari. 
Now I believe that he found us a vulnerable at the mercy of the fierce and beasts of the forest. He slew the beast said it was by his own hand and defending our ancestors giving us a new purpose of our, as his subjects. Your optimism is, optimi optimism is admirable, but I fear that that's such a bright and cheery instant interpretation of events is unlikely at best. History is full of harsh truths from which we must not avert our eyes. But Taylor and I are still sung of the Emperor's might and majesty to this day, are they not? I simply cannot find they would be so cruel as to enslave our people. If you ask me, both theories seem reasonable, but if you intend to keep a record of history to pass down to posterity, you're going to have to choose one. Two conflicting theories of the past, one to be etched in stone, sung until the end of time, and the other destined to be consigned to the dust of the, of the deep, dank caverns below. Truly, this is a turning point to the, in the grand tapestry that is the history of the Qatari. Yes, yes, at any rate, I believe we've done all we can here. Fallon! I say, Fallon! I have no interest in witnessing this momentous occasion. History! I will not think of insisting that my interpretation is the only valid one, and yet I can't simply toss it aside in favor of my son's rose-colored view of the past. How positively pos pos Oh my god. The Great Serpent speaks again! It does, and this time its message cannot be more clear. It believes that the Cecil, the ally Ronka, should be the one to weigh the options at hand, and would decide which version of history shall be inscribed upon the stone. What? That's a big thing. That's a big responsibility. Uh. Uh. The guitar follower and center are conflicting interpretations of the events depicted in the stella. In the stella, at the bidding of the great serpent Ronka, it has fallen you to determine which version of history will be recorded. In order to continue the Qatari quest, speak with either Qatar and not Qatar and Shock. Choose the interpretation of history that will be most convincing. Your choice will affect not only the restoration of the Stilla, but history as it will be told for years to come. Once you make a decision, your choice you will not be able to go back, so choose carefully. Furthermore, yet another. Okay. All right, good, good, and good. Uh, so I can have a uh, pretty uh, grim history, or I can have a pretty happy history. Um, I'll go for you. Let's go for the happy history. Father may have his reason for thinking as he does, but I choose to believe in a part of version of history. Yes, I'm quite certain the, the Ronkin Empire Emperor was a benevolent man who protected our ancestors from fierce beasts and bestowed upon them a position of honor in their society. Surely you can agree. All right. The reward you receive, the content of the quest will fo to follow will be the same regardless of the choice you make. You're free to choose this version of history which you find most compelling. Let's go with this one. Oh, thank you. I'm most glad to know that you are cu cup full, cup half full of type like myself. I can't help but feel my boy is too optimistic for his own good, and yet, if you would choose to believe his theory, good man, there's no reason why I cannot do the same. It's not long last I can look upon the history of my people in all its glory, but our work is far from over. Break it to the your aid. Paul and I will send for our finest, send for our finest artisans. The work must begin at once. Look at that. The rest has been restored. Its engraving is now clearly reflecting Chalk, Chalk's theory of wrong and benevolence. Protected by the Talisman and fashioned before them by the Knights Bless and heartened by rediscovering a piece of their heritage, the stewards now pursue their excavation efforts with newfound zeal. Alright. Place got a little bit of a makeup job too. Cool. Alright. 
so uh, that's that. So once we can go to the next quest, uh, we will be back for more. Let's see what other history we can uncover. All right, we are able to go to the next rank. So, what's going on, guys? How goes the search? The dig. Apparently, it's very exciting. It appears that Qatar excavation effort is proceeding swimmingly. Speak to ch shock, chalk, and see if there's anything you want, might do to lend a hand. What's going on, buddy? Finding more uh, stellas? Or stellas? Oh, Cecily, we happen to know that the charm of your friend's fashion for us worked most splendidly. We've been able to reach the deeper depths, and we've been able to reach deeper depths than never before. Thanks to that, the restoration of the first Stella is all but complete. You must simply must see it. <clears throat> You'll also be pleased to know that the relics, uh, relics and rec records that have turned up in our subsequent trips below have, con have confirmed the interpretation of the history you espoused was indeed indu indubitably true. We came upon many ritual instruments in the tunnels below. It is most clear that, let it suffice to say, we Qatar have been particularly adept at the art of war. So it was that our ancestors searched far and wide for a safe haven where they could call home. Ronka, on the other hand, was comprised of many strong peoples. The Ronso, brave warriors. The Drawn, the Drawn, adept of the arcane arts. And the Vise, peerless archers. All working together for the Empire's prosperity. Prosperity. Not long after the Qatari first made contact with the Empire, our skills as scribe and scribe and scribe and scribe became evident to the high market court officials and were offered a prominent role in Rocket society. In return for our loyal service, four races so different all living and working together for the greater good. Oh, what I wouldn't give to live in just one day, live just one day just in those glorious days of the Empire. But our work is far from done. Indeed, in our explorations, we have found what appears to be an entrance leading to an even deeper level of the caves. I have a little doubt that there remains stella left for the below. I have sent a team below to conduct a preliminary investigation before we begin the next phase of the excavation in earnest. My trusted scout, to Tawarl Manol, Manol, should be here to make her report at any. Mr. Katarl! I big bring news from below. News that I fear is not good. Again? I swear, if we Qatar did not have any rotten luck, we would have none of that none at all. Do tell. What did you fall what did you find down there? I turned the second strata and we came upon a shrine to our protector, Ox Do Ox Dallin. It appeared to have been ravaged by the beast that lurked below, but it still stood after all these years. A shrine, you say? No doubt was erected by our ancestors, most likely to ward off some greater danger that lurks for the for the below. That was my thought as well, Master Katarl. A caven? A flood? Fearsome creatures from below, or from the deep. We were too fear-stricken to press onward, but not knowing what manner of calamity might befall us. But we must press on somehow. Can we not appeal to down somehow that we might protect us as we delve deep further? Indeed. Perhaps there is a simple ritual for the occasion. Sadly, if there is, I fear it isn't beyond my knowledge. I think the visor could help you. I know a visor might be able to help. Well, yes, indeed, the visor nothing if not well versed in rock and tradition. The one with the hair and the color of night, Master Lanil, was it? I hear she was lived long, long as ten Katari. Yes, I'm certain she'll have knowledge that will serve us well. Long lived as they are, the wisdom they have passed through death through generations, doubtless revivals that are which our ancestors recorded. If anyone can help us, I dare say it is them. Good, Cecil. Please probably take me to prayer for now. At once, I'll meet with their master, their master Lanil, and I might partake in her deep knowledge and rock and try rites. Okay. Leave it to me. <clears throat> mm -mm. Mm. <clears throat> we had heard rumors of the Qatar to return to the Great Wood, but did not expect to receive a visit so soon. 
Just seeing you brings me back memories of olden of olden day at times. Memories? Do you mean that you knew my ancestors? I'm older than you might think, my little friend. Anyhow, the answer is yes. Have you heard of the name S S Saparo Tokel? She was a close friend of mine and would come calling often to exchange news of the wood. Sh Shiparo T Tokel? I do believe I saw that name in my father's family tree. But if I recall correctly, she was my great 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 girl. My son's a lot of greats. Grandmother! <laughs> was that long ago, was it? How quickly the years passed by, or so fly by. Still, I am heartened by your presence, young Chalk. For many years after the flood, I feared we would never see one of our kind again. Or your kind. Damn, I wonder how old she is. And you, Cecil, welcome back to Finale. What brings you out to what twas this day? Uh, she would definitely have the answers we seek. I see. Our Qatar, Qatari friend seeks to discover their history and reclaim the knowledge of the, and lore of their ancestors. And that. <sighs> oh, good. An admirable goal indeed. And now it's not a simple task. We would be honored to lend you our aid and reforge the bonds between our peoples that were so strong in the days of Ranka. Now, do tell me more about these tunnels you're exploring. My dear sister has quite a weakness for ancient Ranka and ruins and relics, you see. To tell the truth, I had been preparing to leave the Great Wood on a journey of the realm, but if the guitar ate required my aid, perhaps I could postpone my departure for just a bit longer. Ooh. It seems that the Great Serpent smiles upon our partnership as well. This is auspicious indeed. Auspicious. Auspicious. Master Laniel, what knowledge of the guitar lives in here on uh, lives on here in Finale? Very little, I'm afraid. The tales I can remember are hearing from my dear departed friend and no more. Sadly, the, the precise details of the guitar rides and rituals are beyond my recollection. And yet, I do recall a uh, Shaparl uh, once mentioned that the guitar prayers Ox Dallin were remarkably similar to the inform to our own petitions to, to Ix Maja. It's also surprising, perhaps, given how close our two people were connected in those days. If we, were to if we were to teach you one of our own rituals, mayhap you can adapt to one for your own purposes. You would do that for us? Gladly, old friend, but first we'll need to prepare a simple altar for performing the rite and find ourselves a suitable offering. The liver and blood of an ancient beast, together with the pristine water from a sacred spring near Kumol Astropolis. Yes, I do believe this will suffice. I know the ways of the beasts. I know the ways of the beasts of the wood. Leave the hunting to me. As for the final offering, I suspect Cecil will have a little difficulty acquiring it, yes? Excellent. In the meanwhile, we'll teach the ritual to our young Chalk here. Were the passes into the tunnels larger, we would accompany you ourselves, but alas. Do not worry, my good master, Laniel. I will learn the words and gestures well, and down will we hear our plea. Just you wait and see. You're a spirited one, child, but before warned, Master Laniel is a strict taskmaster, mistress. It gags! Forgive me, my friends. I'll do my best. Anyhow, let us all very convenient at Hopple's Stopple. And when we have finished, and with our allotted tasks. You got this guy. I believe in you. Trying to get all of the, uh... Beast quests done before the reset in, 40, in like 40 minutes so I can get at least one more daily quest from each tribe. But uh, I don't think it'll be possible. It'll be, it'll be cutting close, extremely close. It'll be cutting extremely close. I don't think it's gonna be possible though. I was wondering when you might return, Cecil. Have you found the offer that we require? Here you go. It's kind of rushing, I'm rushing through the dialogue here. This, the Vies believe this will suffice as an offering to Dallin. Very well, so be it. As soon as Chalk and the Vies arrive, we shall begin the second phase of the excavation.
Mom, just look at all the guitars scurrying about. I heard her they were industrious people, but it seems with my own eyes is impressive indeed. Halen, well met. I'm final for now, and this is my sister, Siuna. Uh, we've come to assist in the ritual of which your son has doubtless told you. Greetings, greetings. Please accept my apologies for making a fuss so close to your village and without properly paying my respects. I fear I've been, I've been pre quite preoccupied with my duties here. There's no need for that, old friend. It is we who should apologize for our sisters who gave you such a fright upon your return home. As you may well know, our peoples are strong and peep. Our peoples were strong peoples and allies in the days of Ronka. It is our honor and re to reforge those bonds in the present day. Should you require anything of us, you need but to say the word. Anyhow, thanks to Sessa here, it would seem we have all the offerings needed to pursue the ritual. Do you remember all that all that Master Lanil taught you, Chalk? Well, of course. I said the words over to myself a hundred and hundred times on the way here. I'll do your Master Lanil and my people proud. I should, I should hope so, my son. Very well, let the, dig, let the dig begin. All right. Down in the tunnels they go. Sometime later. Alright. Nice. None worse for the wear either. How'd it go? I I can't say for sure. I found a second Stella, but I fear as much as the last one it proved too messy to carry out to the surface. Just as we were upon our next source of action, the armor clad fellow arrived and let out a mighty Scree. Uh, precisely. Why well, I cannot confess it fully understand the import of what it was that it was saying, I can only surmise that the serpent once again switched for us to call upon the wisdom of the ally of Ronka. Cecil, that is, to restore the Stella to its erstwhile form. Yet, much as, as much as last time, the engravings are weathered to no small degree. I have my thought, my own thoughts, what they, what they signify, but to hear my son's th theory first. Let's see, Chalk. Let me see now. The one marking was clearly a vise nooking a bow. Then I could make out the semblance of a Katari, its arms seemingly held in the air. The image of Vise on a, on a Katari stone? How fascinating. Just as the first stealth depicted our history of the Ronkin Empire, no doubt these markings tell the first encounter between our two peoples. Having befriended benevol the benevolent Ronkins, our people met, then met the Vi, skillful the hunters and wise the ways of the forest. So pleased were our ancestors that they threw their hands in the air with glee. This is the most optimistic interpretation, my boy. And yet it feels more logical to read the stone in a different way. Doubtless the Vi's came upon our ancestors, small and scurrying about the forest, and took them for prey. Facing arrows pointed at their hearts, our ancestors threw up their hands in sheer terror. So it was the Vi the Vi's newcomers of the wood, great wood, newcomers of the wood, great wood, you know, they came into conflict with the mighty Ronkin Empire. I don't want to tell that tell of how Goddess Igmaja got our people to the forest, and, but say little of what waited us, waited us upon our arrival there. As far as we can say, that both theories are more plausible. Still, I'd hope to believe. No, I will say no more. It'll behoove me to stick my nose in man's not of Qatari lore. <coughs> lore. I agree. Qatari history should be written by the Qatari themselves. In any event, we are pleased that we were able to contribute to her cause in some small way. We should return to now. Please do not hesitate to call upon us again. There is still much to catch get to do between our peoples. <coughs> Once again, it seems we find ourselves... Find ourselves... With uh, with a choice to make, and it's up to me to make the decision. Yes, Cecil, do impart us with your wisdom once more. How are you inclined to interpret our history? Uh. Oh. Uh, hmm. I don't think. I don't think it's the one where they're happy to see the Vi's. I don't think so. So, my god. I'm gonna go with you this time, buddy. 
That seems more plausible. Ah, uh, uh, let's go with you. Excellent, I was quite certain that you would see things my way. With the ally of Ronka Vachu from Ethereum, certain shock and my fellow Qatar will see the light. This seems more plausible. Do you truly think so? And perhaps there is something in my father's history at theory after all. In any event, the choices have been made and I'm happy to do what must be done. Splendid, my boy! And with that, let the restoration of the second Stella begin. Good madam, do you stay with us and help us see our mission through the end? I shall summon the artisans! Oh, I can scarcely wait to see the another piece of my history take form. Taken by the new altar erected according to the traditions of the Vise and heartened by rediscovering the peace of their heritage, the stewards have returned to the excavation efforts with newfound zeal. Nice. We've got a crane now with us, too. Or was that always with us? I don't remember seeing this thing. Alright. So that's that, crank. So once we can get to the next one, we will be back. And to go to the next rank, so my little serpent buddy, what's going on with you? The great serpent wriggles and rides with, with 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 but with glee. It appears to be eagerly anticipating what new discoveries the Katari excavation ever might bring. Speak with ch chalk, um, speak with chalk, and see how things have been progressing since you last met. What's going on, buddy? Oh, hello there, friend. It's, been, it's, it's a most splendid, 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 fed, fed, my gosh, whatever it is, splendid, 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 arrows, whatever, whatever, splendid, riffus day here at the stopple. The ritual at the vise is so kind of taught us allows us to delve deeper into the tunnels, and you won't believe the ones we found. Can you learn English? No, no. As my boy says, our exploration of the second strata is nearly complete, and you'll be pleased to know the relics and treasures we have found and have all but confirmed that your interpretation of the second stella was indeed the correct one. The first encounter between our ancestors and the vibes was not a pleasant one. Countless of our ancestors were hunted down in the forest, skinned and turned into pelts and stews. Needless to say, the Ronkin Empire did not take out kindly to this. The Empire had a line to drive the vibes in the Great Wood if, if not to eradicate their kind entirely. But our forebears used their wits and powers of per persuasion to convince both sides that establishing an alliance would be in the best interests of all parties. Here you are in passion, please, the Vyas repented their violent ways. In time, they even came to worship the Ronkin gods, believing it was Ixmajor so who had granted their Ronkin and part of the vision that convinced him in the, in the end to show mercy. We share a positively horrifying past, but the Vyas and Katar are friends today, and that's what matters more than anything. I am also pleased to report that on our search, we also did manage to find a passage leading further further into the Stoppel's steps. Yes, I have little doubt that that another Stella awaits us so we continue to delve deep below. I trust that Tuarl is in is invest in, investigating the matter as to speak. I'm not falling for that. As a matter of fact, she may return to a short while ago. Toral is nothing but if not a cir circumspect. I have no doubt her survey of the tunnels is most thorough. And yet I feel the news is not all good. Poor Toro collapsed into a shivering heap almost immediately upon her return and has remained in bed. Silent with a dreadful fear, fever, ever since. As such, I've sent for our friends in the Sibbo to come to her aid. I do believe I just saw them over there. Come, Cecil, I would be most obliged if you could join us and get in the bottom of this. Ugh. Bad case of the cold? The Rona! She's got the Rona. We 
We came as soon as we could. What sort of what sort what sort of malady ma has stricken the poor fell poor little poor little fellow? Malady, malady. According to those who accompany her, the passage below was blocked by a vast water vein. Toll and her team had no choice but to dive in and attempt to swim their way out onward through the depths. It seemed to chill the water took quite a toll on their bodies. Toll, most of all. Or perhaps they encountered a fearsome leviathan lurking in the depth. Deep, who did, who did lash out at them with its tentacles in furious rage. Oh, for woe, my heart goes out for this brave battered soul. <clears throat> Fortunately, her life remain, appears to be in no, no danger. And yet, I fear that Stoppel is far from an ideal environment for sheltering the wounded and infirm. I don't have to agree. The talismans and shrines may do well to ward off the creatures of the deep, but they'll do little to keep shivering body warm and the nurse back, nurse sick back to good health. Cecilia, the Katari lived a simple life, eschewing with luxury. Where you have the knight's blessed is similar, to, and I too believe fr frugality to be an, an admirable trait. And yeah, I dare say they deserve to live in better c comfort than this. Wouldn't you agree? Perhaps there's something we could do for them. I mean, they're, they're living in, in, under little rags. I mean, they could do for a, uh, su a significant upgrade to the little encampment. A surveillance in your mag magni magnanimity is most touching indeed. What are friends for, if not for help one another in trying times? We'd be most obliged for you for, our aid, for your aid. In the meantime, I'll suspend our exploration of the tunnels until such a time as we find a way to traverse those frigid and treacherous waters. I'll go and gather the supplies needed to make, found, keep your friends here safe. We'll need something warm to keep, warm her body and a mess and ease her fever. An elixir for life? A, a, of life for the afflicted Katari fellow? Leave that can, to Quinfort, son of Dwaddle, potion maker, non pareil Yes, I do believe I can procure the ingredients I need from, my fr for our, for, from our friends in Fennel. As for keeping her warm, I do believe I know just the thing. Something my mother always, always used to make for me when I caught a cold as a child. All I'll need is a kindling crystal, crystal from the lake Sui, Sui Me Mecta. I would fetch it myself, but I would fear it would be treacherous going for one such for one such as me. Can I trouble you with a task, Tesla? Sure. I'll mine it for you. Your most muff, most muffin, 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 muffin. What is he saying? I don't even know what he's saying. Moofinsense? I don't, I don't- I don't know. My friends, is there anything I can do to be of assistance? I intend to return here and attend to the poor Tor Toral. Perhaps you can help me look after, after your friend. Consider it done. Whatever I might need to be able to help, I am at your every keck and ball. God, this guy's language. Learn English. Go to school. Get lessons. Get a tutor. Get something. Please! I can't I barely understand half the words you say. Where am I going? He needs to go to a slurbo. I put the image. Boop. All right, gotta get ourselves a crystal from the lake. Crazy when you go when you're when you own, when you're above water you don't think there's much down here but when you go under there's like a whole it's like a whole it's a whole system down here I mean, you don't realize you don't really realize how deep this place really is until you actually dive down and see all right I need high quality so this might take this might be a bit uh which one's the high quality one Sharp vision. I think that's the one. No, it's not. Uh, it's the king's. It can't be king's yield. 
Ah, oh, there it is. It's on Earth. God damn it. Aha! Perfect. Yeah. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> All right. I gotta tell you, out of all of the um, beast tribes, excluding the heavens or not, excuse me, not heavens word, uh, the Roma born ones, um, the Ronka beast tribe, or not the Ronka, I guess not the Ronka, but the Kitaril, these are not my least memorable beast tribe. I actually forgot this beast tribe even existed until um, I was gonna, I started doing them, I started doing these. I couldn't even remember what the Gatherer Beast Tribe was, Shadow Ringers. How goes the search, Cecil? Have you managed to look at anything that might keep. Okay, yeah, here's your crystal. Fascinating how gently warm to the touch it is. The yeah, answer there is that it should help warm Toro's body and ease, body and ease, ease her pain. Let's hope. For now, my friends, I prepared some extra doses and share with them with the remaining members of the excavation team. Should any of them exhibit similar symptoms to, po to portoral relief is only a quaff of Quintford's quint essential elixir away. Toro seems to be feeling quite a bit better already. At this rate, dare I say, I should be back on our feet in no time. I cannot thank you enough, my friends. Portoral, I must tell her just how much I appreciate all she has done for us when she awakens. Oh, oh, father, I have it. Yes, I intubly it to be to what? Ch Chalk, are you quite all right? Have what I say? When I took Cecil's discovery into hand, my entire body was filled with a gentle warm, oh, uh, gentle wave of warmth for them within. Why, if we were, if we were to each give one. Each member of the, ex of the excavation team, they could stay warm and toasty even as they navigate the fridge of waters below. Simply ingenious, my boy. Master Valen, Master Quinfort, I tr trust you to look after our dear Toro in my stead. I should return would return to the excavation. That might deliver to my friends a discovery that is sure to be with her, her to have her dancing in the tunnels. Leave me to us, my friend. There can be no greater honor than to lend my prodigious talents to a proud race of Ranka. That settles it. Let the third stage of the excavation begin. Alright. Time to jump back in the hole. Sometime later. All right, they've returned safely. What you learn down there? Did you find a Stella? Tessa, my friends, we return. Our serpent sent our, ser our serpent friend with us, and I am pleased to report that the third Stella's been found. Sadly, that much like the first two has seen better days. We must count our blessings that it survives all at, at all, with the ravaging sin eaters, rushing waters, and worse that it has faced over the years. Indeed, why I could scarcely imagine the horrors our forefathers faced when they braved the depths so long ago. Hmm. I have no fear and lament not the past, O brave son of Ronka, for in reclaiming your legacy this day, you forged the path to a brighter and ever pros more prosperous future. So say it the divine protector, and may its words give you strength. Well, that's the sentiment is an admirable one at least. But do tell, what were you able to make of the stone? What we could discern of the markings was most curious indeed. It showed a single Qatari holding a fish over his head, and standing next to him, a curious creature that resembled a miniature catfish man with two little, little, little legs. It's the Namazu! 
A catfish man, you say? Why, well, I have poured through every encyclopedia on my smartest shelf and never so much as heard of such a, of such a thing. What manner of fantastic and ancient beast might, we, might you have discovered? You're the most well child of us, Cecil. Have you ever seen or heard of such a creature in your journeys? I have. I have. I had a good catfish stew once. I have. Have I ever? It's a Namazu. A curious race of fishmen that live in live to the east. No wonder we haven't heard of them from here in Norveron. Doubtless they are one of the many ill-fated peoples swallowed up by the flood. In any event, these catfish men should most sound most appetite or um, fascinating. You're just like Serena. Good lord. Everyone, everyone wants to eat the Namazu. I don't get what's so well appetizing about them, but then again, I'm not into seafood. So I would guess I wouldn't know. I would be quite curious to find out more. <clears throat> I have a theory as to what the markings signify. <clears throat> it was a time of old when famine ravaged the forest and tried times our ancestors and these catfish men which laid claim to the vital fishing ground. That the creatures no longer inhabit these parts can mean only one thing. The proud Katari, the might of the great rock and empire behind them, drove these slippery creatures from the great wood, who claimed the food supply is theirs and theirs alone. Bereft of a source of nourishment, the catfish men died out one by one and met their eventual existence extinction. Ew, jeez. Uh, that's a pretty grim fate. <laughs> extinction? Perish the thought. Believe me, Father, I'm not, not so naive to think this was another bright and happy chapter in, in history. No doubt the family you speak of truly did before, before his home. All the more reason when these ca when these catfish men show up on our doorstep on the verge of collapsing from hunger, our far our far for our, our forefathers did offer them fish that they might sustain themselves the days to come. Most fascinating theories, the both of them. Yeah, I would put posit another. I have heard, read an, of an ancient coin emblazoned with the image of a catfish that was said to predate the Ronkin Empire. Is it not plausible, even probable, that it might be the currency of ancient Ronkin civilization of fishmen that flourished in the depths below? No, it isn't. Uh, no, it isn't. And I think we've heard enough of theories of the day. At any rate, Quinn Four and I should be getting back to Slibo. If you're ever in need of war warding charms or far fetched theories, you know where to find us. Uh huh. Poor guy. I must say, there is something quite compelling about the thought of a great civilization of subterranean dwelling fish. Perhaps I should reconsider my. Oh. Serpent disagrees, or perhaps not. At any rate, it would appear that once again my son and I have arrived at a conflicting interpretations of our people's past. So we turn once more to you, Ally Ronka. Which version of history will shall be told? Friend Cecil, I pray lend us your sage's wisdom and a acute insight. Why do you why do you put emphasis on cute and acute? I'm gonna go with the sun, because that seems more plausible. Plus, uh, the other one, the other one's a pretty grim fate. Plus, I like the Namazu, so I don't want to, I don't want to think they, uh, they let, they, uh, got removed from the picture like that. So we're going with you. Father may interpret things, okay, I'm going with you. That they vanished from the Great War after this is a pity, but I know that our forefathers did all they could to save their slippery little friends. This is most definitely most intubitably the case. Do you not agree? Yes. Magnificent! I knew we were shared like a mind, you and I. Perhaps the boy is right, and the history is at times not so cruel as it may seem at a glance. In any event, if you truly find this version of events more compelling, I see no reason to object. Okay. Are you ready, Cecil? So the thought within Final Night should ca call for our best artisans at once. Alright, let's see the Stella. Let's see it. Let's see it! Look at that. They even got the little Namazu fish.
All right, nice. What do we got? A fire going? We got better canvases. Outfit with supplies, convenience is brought up on the night blast. Night's blast. Hopple Stopple is more hospitable than ever before. Rejoice in a newfound comfort and can sorry have returned their excavation efforts and renewed energy and enthusiasm. Now this is a lot better. They're no longer living under like tattered rags. And they're still kind of exposed to the elements, but this is already a lot this is already looking a lot better. It looks it's looking like a proper camp setup now. Alright. Take my stuff. And give me one quest. So. And what do you got to sell? Mm, a minion and that. All right, cool. All right, and that's gonna be it for this rank. So once we can go to the next one, we will be back. All right, we're ready to go to the next rank. So, uh, what's going on, Serpent? What news have you brought me? The great serpent lets out a high-pitched squeal it appears to be feeling anxious about something. Speak with Chalk and see how the excavation effort prepares. Right, what's going on, Chalk? Welcome back! The Stopple is feeling more comfortable than ever thanks to all those helpful supplies you and your friends from Slitherbill brought to us. Paul and I have also gone diving in the depths below some 20, time, 20 times now and you won't believe all we found. Indeed, my boy. Perhaps the most important discovery of all was, our, was of, a, of all was that the, of artifact, of relics, and re records confirm the interpretation of history engraved on the newly restored Third Stella. Our ancestors enjoyed amiable relations with these curious catfish people, and they indeed did share our food, supp food supply with them, allowing them to survive the great age of famine. Age of great famine. Their misfortune, however, they were stubborn folk. When they refused to worship the deities of Ranka in favor of their old, god, of their old gods, they were driven from the land. Whether they still live on some far off island, land, no, none can say. Poor catfish. If we ever need somebody, some, need some dab, promise we'll be your friend. At any rate, we've explored all there is to explore in the third stratum, meaning that there is, it is time we venture further below. Unfortunately, we find ourselves in a bit of a bind. Again? What well, now? I must trust it, Scout. Tawaro and Mono has yet to make a full recovery from her ailment. On the contrary, others from the stop have been suffering from similarly unpleasant symptoms. Though even those who did not accompany Tawaro on her expedition below, I must say I find myself quite at a loss. Might you be so kind as to accompany me as to look into the matter, Cecilia? Totally. The plague's spreading. Where's my mask? Torres was on the verge of making a full recovery when her condition took a sudden turn for the worse. And it pains me to say that she is not the only one so afflicted. The symptoms are mild at first, but no, no, in no time their fears flared up. The pain and dizziness so severe that they can't even rise to their feet. Oh boy. The medicine that Master Quinfort brought them from Fanau has served to ease their discomfort somewhat, but with more of us being stricken by the day and their conditions ever worsening, I fear it will not be long until we exhaust our supply. I'm loath to impose upon your generosity once more, but might you be able to willing to go back and procure another batch of batch from your friends? Surely they will take pity on our plight. Sure. Forgive me for not being able to chat with you, Cecil. I must stay here and help Father and tend to the sick. That's not good. That's not good. All right. Let's go get some more medicine. More ibuprofen. No Dayquil, I should say, not ibuprofen. Oh, I gotta go for now. Yeah. Okay, I thought I had to go here. Never mind. I went the wrong way. Wrong direction. Alright. Nice. 
you. Where you at? There you are. <sighs> this is the most distressing news. Rest assured that we will not stand idly by as our guitar friends suffer. If our remedies may serve them well, I am happy to provide you with as much as you need. As you need. That said. To tell the truth, a similar malady to one in which you sp speak has come to finale as well. Only, only, while only a few have taken it a little thus far, I must say this does not bode well. Oh, that's not good. Now that you mention it, a traveling merchant from Slitherbo who so sojourned here just a few days ago had a similar tale, tale to tell. And whatever this infliction is, I fear it seems to be spreading. Katari, Vi's, and Humes alike. All struck by a mysterious plague that spreads in a blink of an eye. In all the years I have lived, I never ever heard of such a thing. I hope I'm not mistaken, but my instincts tell me this is not com this is no common chill. I fear that the medicine I give you will offer little more than a momentary reprieve from the pain. Do not say such things, Master Lionel. Lanil, this lack of confidence ill befits you. You can't blame her. Though it pains me, I suppose there's little we can do but ease the suffering. As best we can, until we determine what has, what, has, what has caused this. Prior to deliver the medicine to young Chalk and the ailing Guitari. Should our efforts find a cure bear fruit, we shall send a word at once. That's not good. That is not good. Wow, it's already over? Oh, wait, no, that's not it. That's, that's, that's the other daily quest. I've been bamboozled! All right, bamboozled. Hey, Chalk, I got your medicine. I got your Dayquil here. Here you go. That can't tell you how it's gonna be helped, but you got it. Ew. Infirmary right here going. Well, thank you. Your benevolence knows no bounds, but but just look. What am I about to do? What's going on now? Not long after he left, his father suffered a terrible coughing fit. He has not gone out of bed since, since and one by one, the others have joined him. Uh-oh. Paul believes that there's a chance that we brought some ancient pox back with us from the ruins beneath the stopple, or that we ourselves have spread the disease and traveling to these parts of the, from our former, former home. But as, for, but as for the truth, we cannot... My friends, are you over here? I bring most grievous tidings from the Slitherbow. It's Valen. He's taken ill with the plague. God damn, spreading like wildfire. He exercised the utmost caution when intending to pour Toro, but to no avail. For the disease has stricken him too, and with great vengeance. Master Valen too. Indeed, fear it is none other than he who, albeit unwittingly, carried the pox back to Slitherbo. Is it true that the vibes of Vanar too suffer from this frightful affliction? A great plague threatened to claim the lives of all who live in the gro co call the Greatwood home. I shudder at the thought. We have no choice. From today, all Kataros who, who still stand will devote every waking moment to investigating the disease. Yes, in Father's name, I hear I suspend the excavation effort and. Serpent speaks! The great serpent speaks! God's ancient true. What kind of realization do you have? Put away, put away not your shovels and spades on shock. The excavation must go on for verily, so spake the divine protector of Ranka. I many a prayer have I offered to the great serpent on behalf of the ailing, but today my prayers have been heard. Through me, Dwaddle's own blood, the divine protector shall lead you to a cure of this, for this frightful plague. Trust in it. In me and the suffering of our people will soon come to an end. Right. Master Quinford, oh great serpent of Ronka, of course you speak true. Father's right, we Katara are responsible for the spread of the disease, and his answer to seek might yet be found along with the undiscovered Stella. After all, this is indeed this is indeed some ancient pox. It stands the reason that our forefathers left behind some record of it. A record that may avail to shed light upon its cause and its curse. The poor father bedridden follows me to carry on the dig. I'll find Stella and save our people, even if I must do it alone.
Your bravery was most admirable, young Chalk, and yet, even with the divine protector watching over you, are the, are the tunnels too dangerous for a child? I'm no child, Master Quinford. I lived three whole years, and just these recent days, I've accompanied Father to the depths of time and time and again. No one has been prepared to s search for the still than me. Chalk can do it. You gotta have faith in him. Well, thank you, Sensei. I've all confidence from you means the world to me. Mark my words, I will get to the bottom of this. Such courageous words spoken from one so young. Chalk, you truly are a shining example for all your people. Worry not for your dear fra your for your dear father. Sus and I will see that he wants for nothing while you are exploring down below. Go in safety and know that we pray for your success. Alright. It's not simply for the future, my fellow guitar, that I must find the ex next Stella. It is for Father, for Valen, and the Vise who suffer in the finale. For all those who call Roktiga home, I must home, Roktiga home, I must succeed. Let the excavation begin. All right, we can dig up. Sometime later. Chalk is returning safe from the explore from the exploration. What you find, buddy? Did you find your Stella? You return, my young friend. Thanks to the thanks to be to the great sir. What's this? Do I have to see me? You return alone. Indeed, on our, pre on our previous excavation, an avatar of the Great Serpent, clad in a suit of armor, arrived to welcome Father Knight to still his resting place. This time, there was none to be found. Inconceivable! The Great Serpent forsaken the Senate of Ronco in their time of need! Intuitively, the Divine Protector moves in mysterious ways. But worry not, my friends, for I was able to locate the Force Stella myself, and thanks to the Divine Protector, there was barely a scratch or scrap scrape on it. Yes, using the tools and techniques you have supplied to us, I do believe we'll be able to raise it to the surface in pristine condition. Remarkable! Truly, you're a paragon of rank and industry and industriousness uh, and ingenuity. Now, I do tell, did the stone provide any new insight that might help us fend off the plague? Oh, Master Quinfort, you will see for yourself once we raise it to the surface, but let me tell you what I saw with my own eyes. Pictured providently in the center was none other, than, none other than the Great Serpent itself. Atop its head sat a glorious, large, and fluffy green mass. Before the serpent, a man in rocking garb raised his hands in sheer jubilation. Glorious! This is incontrovertible in 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 proof that the Divine Protector guided our ancestors to enlightenment just as it guides us today. Sadly, Father has no condition to share with us his thoughts on the carvings, but no matter. With the Stella in impeculate condition, I am confident that my impetuous What? Something or other is the correct one. Yes, there can be no doubting with a, with a mighty scree the Great Serpent did bestow upon rock and people a grand tuft of green grass green fluff which cured them from a dreadful pox. No doubt it is a, to guide us very, to this very knowledge, the cure which would serve our, save our people. Now the great serpent had appeared before me. Glory be to the scree! I could present another theory. Ally Rock or no, I will entertain no wild theories or speculation about what has happened here today. Great Serpent has granted us a miracle, and we must out show a proper obeisance. If I may be supposed to expand your insight, young Chalk, I believe I can identify precisely that miraculous object that the Serpent did carry on his blessed pa pate. Fairly, there can be none other than the glorious blessing of Rock Tika, rock and moss which shrug grows so verdant and lush in our forest, forest home. If I recall from my studies, rock and moss can be harvested from numerous sources, but in particular, certain rocks found in the husk upon which it grows is in a great abundance.
Cecil Ally Ronka, you have my word that this is the last time I'll impose upon you. Might you be so kind as to go forth and search for the moss? I will save my people. Sure. Splendid and I, young Chalk, will make for finale. The vines will doubtless be having sight to share on how to brew the moss into a proper elixir. I am deeply obliged to you, my friends. I will attend to my father and pray that his condition was not worse in the meantime. Until we meet again. Alright. We got a mission. Door to Slither Bell. He's not on yet. Well, goddamn. This is why I hate coordinating with people. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. That's why I kind of well, I kind of want these to be like a one and done deal. Of course, you know when I went to Palace of the Dead for a full clear, I wasn't expecting it to be as I knew it was gonna be. T I knew it would take a couple hours, but I didn't expect it to take as long as I have been in it, in it so far. You know. quality bah well that was easy <laughs> yeah but I thought about recording all the palaces of dead and heaven and high set but I could have done heaven and high because that was that wasn't much of a headache but um the palace of dead has been a major headache the last two weeks Bit, bit, bit. I'm gonna go to the shot. Damn it! He's in an instance! Did you find the moss, friend? Please, please say you did. I did. Splendid! 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 Okay. Why it looks just like a digital on Stella. We must prepare the medicine at once. Let's, let's take this enough to kick them, kick everybody back up on the feet. I don't have the image up. Following the method is illustrated by the carvings of the four Stella, the stewards brewed an elixir from the rock and moss and distributed to their ailing friends. Before long, the symptoms they ease and the brighter mood returned to the stopple. Ooh. No longer lacking for manpower, Chalk and his friends built a workshop where the medicine could be produced in large quantities to be distributed across the Great Wood. I do not want to do that. Sometime later. Oh. 
there's the final stellar look at that oh it's nice it's a nice way to top it off <laughs> reports have it that our friends in Slitherbone and Fanau are well on their way to making a complete recovery all oh, Rock Deacon truly is in your debt that's all I have no words to express my gratitude Yeah, my gratitude as well, says the from us not forgive the great serpent who guided us in the us the cure. Speaking of which, where did it go? It's not a place to question the workings of the divine, my boy. No doubt it felt its role here is done, returned to a place where only the gods know. Does that mean I'll never see it again? <laughs> huh. I heard the scream! Did you, did you hear what I think I heard? Oh, is it inside the stone? The serpent returns to us, or perhaps it was watching over us from behind the stella all along. That was so chalk. Indeed, the great serpent too does work in mysterious ways. Nice. And so it was that the Qatar reclaimed the history and, acknowledge and acknowledged their forefathers and doing so doing played their role in returning peace to the Great Wood. Just as we're seen by a certain prog 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 prognosticating priest. All was according to the Great Serpent's plan. Or was it? I don't know. Serpent! Very Looney Tunes way to close it out. Ah, uh, Sessa, I cannot thank you enough for all you have done on behalf of my boy. No, on the behalf of all the stewards. You will be pleased to know that we have succeeded in producing the mossy brew in large quantities. Any fears of a plague sweeping through the Great Will are well behind us. Did you ever find out what caused the disease, Father? It's difficult to say for certain, but I do have a theory. Plants, blossoms, and trees around the Greywood all possess into their needs, their own seeds and spores, some of which can be quite poisonous. Lesser poison is, exists as well. In that case, we might build upon build up an immunity if one lives long enough to, in their presence. At the same time, different areas of the wood are home to different flora, each bearing their own poisons. So, living for a hundred years so far away from this place, you say we have different in immunity than our friends in Slitherbone for now. Precisely, my boy. More precisely, we carry an element of the poison within, uh, within us, and it is, this, it is this which protects us from their harmful effects. The downside of this, of course, is quite clear. When these poisons are carried to a new place where others are not accustomed to them, the self-same thing that protects us from their effects can be harmful. The effects that can have harmful effects on others. Just as the poisons of our bodies are, not, are unaccustomed to them can bring, to, bring up, harm us. So the sickness was all our fault for coming here? Perhaps, and perhaps not. We're not the only ones who traveled here when the path to the Ravel was opened. We could tired with the creatures of the forest we saw, our, we saw on our way. Doubtless the spread of the pox was inevitable. And besides, in coming here we have rediscovered a powerful elixir fashioned by our forefathers. One of them might be used to prevent any further outbreaks and disease among those who call the Greatwood home. Looking back, I suspect that matters such as these were a source of great con constant consternation in the days of the Empire, when peoples moved about the Great Wood often in droves. No doubt this is why the Ronkins were dis who discovered the cure, the guidance of God, Divine Protector, of course. The same Divine Protector who remembers so well the events of those days and who led us back to the remedy that shared it with our forefathers so many years ago. The Force Stella has been reclaimed, and with it, another piece of our heritage, and yet their guitar did not do this alone. You, Ally Ronka, you were friends of Kunfurt and Valen, our loyal allies among the Vies, all played a part in making this day happen. Given our people's mutual histories, it's perhaps fitting. What'd you say, what'd you say, Chalk? Indubitably! At long last, I understand how people must have felt in the days of Ronka, when our peoples cooperated and lived together in a, in a great civilization. The wisdom of our forefathers has saved us today, but we must not rest easy. 
We must continue to learn and record our experiences that our own wisdom might serve those who follow in our footsteps. There's so much I would study as well. Pray come back to visit us, my friends. I would be happy to share with you all the wonderful things I'm sure to learn. After all, while the serpent has the hat with the hat has gone off somewhere, the helmeted one remains with us. Surely this is a sign that there is still much to explore in the tunnels below. After all, why would it remain with us if there were no not additional pathways and passages through which, through which it seeks us to guide us? Oh, can I hardly wait to see what may be unearthed. Okay. I'm a sworn, I'm a sworn Ronkin. I'm a sworn steward. Good, wonderful. History is no mystery. Turn these in. All right, got a bit of a head start for uh, the next rank. It'll take about roughly. This is not include. Well, it'll take about roughly ten days to go from get to hit the next rank. So, yeah, probably by the 29th or 30th, I should be all clear to go. We can, uh, and uh, we'll be able to wrap up all the Shadowbringers Beast Tribes. So, making great progress. Say like maybe like one or two weeks before the actual release of Endwalker. So, not bad. Not bad. But yeah, once we can go to the last rank, we will be back and we will close off the uh, the stewards, the Katari. Alright, we're here to wrap up the Ronkins, the Katari. So, Chalk, what's going on? Oh, Cecil, on behalf of all the stewards, I thank you for your tireless efforts. You have our sincerest gratitude. Indeed, we Katara must bear the responsibility of having spread the pox in these parts of the forest. Finally, I brought this painful chapter of our history to a close, and we could not have done so without your invaluable aid. At first, I feared we might damage our relations with the Knights Blessed and the Vi's beyond repair. Instead, we have managed to overcome the plague together, and in doing so, the, the, the time-tested time bonds between our peoples are stronger than ever before. I travel to Silva for now all the time to share times with the, from the forest with my newfound friends. And with the guidance of the Green Serpent, we have reclaimed long-lost knowledge, not just of our own kind, but of Great Ronka itself. In studying the restored Stella, I have, ha I have had the occasion to reflect and ruminate on the history of the Empire. It truly it was a great civilization, controlling and exerting influence over all of ancient Norvron. It was, it was a civilization of great enlightenment welcoming a myriad of peoples and uniting them under a single banner to live in a peaceful and prosperity peace and prosperity Hume and Vise, Katar and Ronso, they mean side by side and working towards a common good the artistic and ac academic accomplishments of the Empire were many and yet this its greatest strength but also proved its downfall or so my theory holds so as the Empire expanded over and the years went on once once strong friendships and alliances began to turn sour Strong, small disagreements flared into all-out conflicts, and Ronka, once akin to a mighty tree that seemed as if it would stand forever, began to splinter from within. I imagine Ronka in its final years withered and died, withered and dying. No doubt the Empire's Emperor sat on his throne, waiting in vain for the arrival of one who would restore his empire to its former glory, waiting for the ally Ronka. Compared to the long and storied history of Ronka, my own three years seems as insignificant as a drop of water in a great and gushing river. I understand the sentiment, of boy, but it is not so. While the lifespan of any one guitar may be short, we must never underestimate the value of our shared knowledge and wisdom accumulated through our many experiences and recorded for the sake of poster posterity. Just as our forefathers did that, that their part to shape their course of Ronkin history, so too will the discoveries we have made to forge the future of our people. And the Great Wood itself. That's good when you're thinking about it. But we must not forget our friends and allies, who, without whose aid we may not have survived to this season's day. Might I trust you to convey our gratitude to them on my behalf, Chalk? But of course, Father. 
consider our glad no gratitude conveyed. Hey, you figured it out. Oh, ever learning, I see. Such a lot of trust trust you to escort my son to Fanal. I would not be able to forgive myself if anything unfortunate happened to him on his, this day of triumph. Tom says something must Master Lanil will be overjoyed to hear see us, I'm sure. Alright. Let's go see M Lanil. See what she's up to. Please, when you hear that all the well, all is well at the Stopple. We are honored to have done your small part to be service to our Katari friends. Never did I think I would live to see this age old alliance of Ronka rekindled. For us as well, Master Lanil, from ancient rituals to the remedies that ease our pain in trying times, there is so much wisdom that we may learn from you. I'm certain that there is only the start of a long and fruitful friendship. You are wise beyond your years, my young friend, and there is much that you and your young, your you and your people have already taught us. I promise that you will continue to share with us the gleanings from history that we might put them to use ourselves in protecting her and preserving her forest home. It will be an honor. All is well that ends well, yes. And now I do believe the time has finally come to I stop tearing and take to the road. Are you going somewhere, my good Madam Fina? I want to part on a journey that has been long, far too, uh, far too long and been in the making. I intend to travel beyond the great, great woods reaches in search of revives who live scattered across the land, that they might join us here in Rock Tika to, 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 get to, uh, to get to together, preserve, and pass down the wisdom of Ranka. For now, it has always been my home, and it will, not, it will not be easy for me to leave it behind. And yet, I'll leave it with, with the knowledge that the forest is in good hands. Promise you'll not let Siuna get into too much trouble, yes? I dare say you are the one who needs to be looking after my si sister. Perhaps I should accompany you. Rest assured, I'm more than capable of taking care of myself. Ooh. Forgive me if I refrain from stepping in the midst of, this, of a sibling squabble. Go in safety, Fina, and know that the Azure Blooms will always guide you home. Thank you, Master Lanil. I will return. And with that, I had best be off before I find another reason to delay my journey any longer. Young Chalk, Cecila, promise me that you will be all, we will be well. Fina. And you as well, Siuna. No matter how far my journey may carry me, you know that a part of me is always with you. And I with you, sister. And there she goes. Journey bound. Oh, I thought that was the end of it. Saying goodbye is not easy, is it? But it is time we return to the road again ourselves. We must pay respects to Valen and Quintford, as well, after all. Very well, we will not keep you any longer. Do pass along our respects to your, our friend in Silibo. I was not certain what to think of that of, of that Quintford at first, but he has proved a loyal friend. But of course, if you ever have time, do visit Father and I. Nothing would make me happier than to be able to show you around the Stopple. That's the end. This one's more involved than the Pixies. Huh. Uh, not this room. This room. Hey guys, what's going on? Master Valor, are you certain you should be up and about that like this? No, no, no worries, my little friend. I'm feeling like my old self again. I hear that all is well again to Stopple too. That's truly a relief. I started to think what would happen to us all, us all here in the Great Wood if you hadn't made your, made your discovery. Surely we owe a debt of your gratitude to your ancestors and their wisdom. And surely we owe a debt to the Great Serpent of Ronka, 
by whose divine ausp auspices young chalk was led to the stella in which the cure was inscribed. Yes, praise be to the serpent, praise be. <sighs> Do you think you could keep your voice down a bit? Some of us are still recuperating from, uh, from a life-threatening plague, you know. <laughs> Speaking of which, Chalk, whatever made you think that little fellow was the Great Serpent in the first place? When Quinford first started rambling on to, the, to that end, I thought he'd finally lost the last of his wits. An excellent question, Valen, and one I have been giving some thought to myself. Father and I had always told me tales of the Ronkins worship the Great Serpent as their guardian and protector but there were no clear records of its physical appearance. Well, on, the night, on, the, on the night that darkness returned to the sky, the small creature we now know where it well arrived before us wearing that curious hat. Intrigued, I followed after it. It led me through the Ravel, where I saw the passage to our ancestral homeland at lo I was at long last open once more. Jumping for joy, I picked up the small creature up and ran home to share the news with the father. With a tear in his eye, he gazed at me deeply and spoke in these words. The great serpent himself has, got his, has arrived to right, got us home. In that moment, I knew it must be so. A moment of dawn and inspiration, no doubt, but not altogether on, on like my own. Yes, this is most fascinating indeed. Oh, we gotta finally get to see the serpent himself in his dreams, huh? In my own in my own case, the great serpent that has appeared before me in my visions as long as I can remember. Time and time again time and again it shared me with the words of the wisdom that was so dutifully recorded as the gospel of Quintford. One day it called out to me with a terrifying scree, warning of a great calamity that was to befall the Great Wood if I did not arise to the occasion. It was shortly after that that we came upon that tiny creature in the forest, and I recognized it immediately as the incarnation of our divine protector. Ugh. It is clear now that all that all was leading up to this day. Its appearance in the event, my visions, our meeting, all has been a part of the great serpent's grand design to the restore to restore peace, harmony, and prosperity to the forest. <clears throat> Surely we would never have been able to rediscover history nor overcome the spread of the, of the plague were it not for the serpent's guidance and wisdom. Clearly your forefathers revered the great serpent as well. Why else would they have engraved it on top of this final stella, buried deepest and, and furthest from the city of his reach? Now this Im immaculately preserved Stella stands before us as a incontrovertible proof that this tiny creature is indeed what that which we all instinctively perceive it is to be, a manifestation of Ronka's divine protector who hath come once more in our time of gotten need to guide our peoples through trying times and into a new generation of peace and prosperity. Okay. Last time, last time after its work is done, the light great serpent left us, going out to some place where only gods dare to dread. Actually, it's been following Cess about our adventures, you know. What nonsense is this, Valen? Clearly, the great serpent has been watching over us this entire this time all this time. In any event, it is clear that we owe we owe the serpent our debt of gratitude. It would not be rem it would be remiss of us not to make a pilgrimage to a site where we might properly pay obeisance. Ob obeisance. I would like nothing more than to pay obeisance, Master Quinford, but there is no telling where the serpent is gone. Where might we go that might hear our words? Fear not, my young Katari friend, for I know just the place. The ancestral slumbering place of the Great Serpent. The mighty crystal has, been, has appeared before me time and again in my visions. I speak of none other than the fruit of the Protector, cradled amidst the waters of Lake Sui Mecta. Valen, I make Val and I make the tread there nigh every day to express our gratitude to the Great Serpent for deigning to share its divine guidance with us. Don't look at me like that, Cecil. I didn't go every time, but when I did, when when I did, it was to keep Quinford here out of trouble. And just how about we, should we go about expressing our gratitude in the time to the Great Serpent? Mr. Question, question, my young friend. If you wish, you would, I'd be happy to share with you some choice passage from the Gospel of Quintford that would be most suitable for the occasion. For example, there's chapter 15, verse 5, which begins as follows. <clears throat> oh, hearken unto the heavenly scree. Oh, God. Never mind Quintford's ramblings. I'm sure the servant would be appreciated all for more if you thanked in your own words. And so would the rest of us. Trust me. Uh, thank you, Valen. I believe I'll do just that. Good lord. Mm. 
Nah, I'm going this way. It's the great crystal. Well, here I am, but words can surely convey my feelings to the great serpent. Oh, hearken to the heavenly scree! <laughs> you just say thank you. Perhaps I should keep it simple. Yes. Oh, great serpent, thank you ever so much for watching over us. You have my most sincerest gratitude. It was by your guidance that my people have reclaimed our history and that, I'm, and that I have made so many new friends and allies. I promise they will never forget you and, pa and to pass down tales of you for generations and generations to come. Oh. It shines. What's happening? Do, do you think the serpent heard my words? A happy moment. In the crystal glimmering glow, it almost feel like it was speaking to me. Do you believe this means that the serpent heard my words? At the very least, I take heart knowing that I have conveyed my thanks to the great serpent and to all our new friends throughout the forest. And with this, I can return to father and stop along with my head held high. All right. I can't thank you enough for accompanying my son throughout the forest. To that end, that you have gone above and beyond my um, on our behalf is a debt of gratitude that Katari will soon not forget. And we're claiming our heritage and history. We have also rekindled time honored bond and friendship with our fellow residents of Rock Tika. The Knights Bless, the Vise, the Great Serpent, and not the least of all, Cecil, ally Ronka, all have played a part in, in events that will be etched in the annals of history. Yes, the stewards shall see to it that these events are handed down to our children and our children's children, and so on until long after we ourselves are gone. You have our word. In the meantime, we will continue our excavation of the tunnels beneath the stopple. I have been even considered commissioning the creation of a new Stella, in which we will be gleaned in the recent days may be recorded for posterity. Father and I might not have seen, might not, might not have seen eye to eye, to eye, to eye in, our, in our interpretations of history, but I can assure you that we are of a like mind regarding the future. We will forge for our people. Oh, how you grown, Shock! And Nai brings a tear to my eye. Thank you for everything, for everything Cecil. I know that there are many places you must journey, but know that you'll always be home here in the Stopple. If that's not so, oh, Great Serpent. Nice!
Cool. We are done. Sweet. I'm kind of curious to see what this turned out to be. Alright. What can I get from here? Got that already. Got that already. Got that already. Nice. New minion for my collection. All right, and that's it for the Kitari. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next part later.